sir. Once by common sense, common sense, at least Tiffany's common sense is 1.5. Hopefully everybody else agrees with that. The other way is by physically doing it, and when you do it, you're going to come out to 1.5 if you apply it to three coins. And the third way is by a formula. So what's the formula? Well, I'm going to explain to you the logic of the formula a little, little bit later on, but the formula itself is pretty simple, and it's worth about a third, literally a third of the set. X times P of X. Now, what does this formula say in English? It says, take each X value, multiply it by the P of X, the X times is, means dot times, and then add together all those separate products. So if you want to make a column, this times this is what, zero, 1 out of times 3 out of 8 is 3 out of 8, 2 times 3 out of 8 is 6 out of 8, and 3 times 1 out of 8 is 3 out of 8. Add them all together, and what are you going to get? Well, hopefully it comes out to 1.5, so let's see if that works out. 0 times 1 out of 8 is 0. 1 times 3 out of 8 is 3 out of 8. 2 times 3 out of 8 is 6 out of 8. And 3 times 1 out of 8 is 3 out of 8, of course. And then, of course, it comes out to 12 out of 8, which is 1.5. So the answer mathematically boils down to the same answer of common sense and also experience. It's nice when all three things work out the same way. It'd be nice if I can write straight. I don't know why I can do that. Okay, so that is your first introduction to the formula called E of X. Quite important formula for okay, business applications, this chapter, the test, etc. We're not going to really use it that much in the rest of the term, but it is important for chapter, chapter five. Excuse me. Okay, now let's apply that formula to some of the other things that we did. Um, let's go back to the, the example that I erased, and I'm not going to bother writing it on the board. I think it was number 5.29, where the, the x's and the p of x's didn't go from 0 to 3, but they went from 0 to 20. And the chance of 0 had 1 head, 2 head, 3 head, 4 head, 5 head, up to 20 heads, not heads, we're looking at something else. In this case, the n is 20, the p value, the little p is 0, 5, and the x values were a whole range of x's, 0 through 20. And I forget the first number was 36 or 38. Um, I'm sorry, it was your number. What? That's why I'm getting confused. There are two Tiffany's in the class. Oh, you're not going to. Okay, Tiffany, what were you saying? You're 36 or 38? Yeah, 36. 36 for the first number. And what was the, I think, you'll 38. 38 for the second number. Uh, and then it started getting, you know, probably starts getting lower and lower until finally, you know, it gets up to one, but a bunch of numbers. So if I asked you, what is the E of X, which is in fact, that was the example that Laura wrote down for part A, the, what is the E of X, what is the average? Well, in order to do it, you'd have to take about an hour to calculate X and P of X, one and P of one, two and P of two, and then after all is said and done, you have to multiply X times P, you're gonna have to multiply them and then add, you know, remember the formula says, take each x, and how many x's are there? 21 of them, from zero to 20 is 21 numbers. And each of the corresponding p of x, and multiply them, so you'd have to, really a very long calculation with a lot of small, tedious numbers. Um, but it, hopefully there's a shortcut, and often in mathematics there is, and a shortcut is what? Well, the shortcut is almost common sense. If you're flipping 10 coins, and the chances of a head is 0.5, how many heads literally do you expect to get? Flipping 10 coins, the chance of a head is a half. How many heads do you expect to get? Five. Five. You expected five heads and five tails. Now, you may get six and four, but you, know, you can't, you can't not, not get that sometimes. But most of the time, you get five heads and five tails. And that formula, if you think about it, if you're flipping 100 coins, and the chance of a head is 30%, how many heads do you expect to get? 30. 30. 30 out of 100, so 30. So, so the formula, the E of X, in the case of the binomial, is only binomial. This is very important. Don't try to apply the shortcut for anything else. It is simply the n time, you can prove it mathematically, of course, it's n times the p. So in the case of flipping 20 coins, and the chance of a head is 0.05, how much is 20 times 1 out of, 0.05 is 1 out of 20. So well, how much is 20 times 1 out of 20? Comes out to 1. And that's why these probabilities are very high, because the chance of getting one head is very high, it's the highest. Chance of zero head is probably pretty high. Chance of two head is probably, and as you go down, it's getting lower and lower and lower. The chance, what's the chance of getting 20 heads in a row? It's practically, you know, impossible, 0. 0.00000001. But the chance of an E of X is n times P. So which formula should you use? You use this formula that takes you a lot of time to use, or a shortcut formula? The answer is, if it's a binomial situation, then you're allowed to use a shortcut formula. But if it's not a binomial, so for example, going back to